grave anymore. He is risen. He is risen. He is risen. Hallelujah.
call it let's go whoa whoa your love is drawing me close i feel it let's go whoa whoa and i didn't think that i could get this close to you from Cape Town today. Welcome from the Mother City. Welcome from the Mother City. We welcome you in Pretoria. Do I see anyone from the commercial city of South Africa? Anyone from Jobek? Continue leading the economy of this nation in Jobek. Amen. Do I see anyone from the capital city of South Africa? <laughs> Thank you for hosting Celebration Church in South Africa today, Celebration Church Pretoria. And I want to welcome everyone this morning. If you may all take your seats, but if there is anyone new in Celebration Church at all, if you are new in Celebration Church, this morning, may I ask you to rise? If you are new in Celebration Church, completely welcome, welcome, welcome. Give your hands for the Lord. Oh, bless you this morning. Welcome. And after the service, we really want to give you a special welcome. So the ushers will take you to our VIP lounge after the service. So ushers, please take notes and take them to our VIP lounge after the service. 
Now, if you are from Celebration Church, Pretoria, on the 14th of April, we have got baby dedication. So to, to those that have got little babies that have not yet been dedicated, we encourage you to make sure that on the 14th, you don't miss our service, for there will be a baby dedication. And also, on the same day, on the 14th of April, there will be water baptism. So if you have not yet been water baptized, and it is your desire to get baptized, please go and register at the information desk at the back immediately after the service so that we can make arrangements that you are water baptized. Amen. 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 And interesting, this morning's Bible reading, if you were there in the Bible reading, oh, yes. John is actually talking about water baptism. So do not miss it. If you have not yet been water baptized, please register at the back and we'll, uh, you'll be water baptized. Eh? Not my place to announce uh, our pastors who are in our house today, but I'll preempt on Friday night. <laughs> we had a couple's dinner. Was anyone at the couple's dinner uh, on Friday night? I don't hear any couples excited. I just want to share, to, to give you a glimpse of what we had on, on Friday night. Amen. So, Mr. Charles Nemachena. Amen. I've been put on the spotlight. <laughs> so, one of the things that, I, that actually stood for me was like for men, their brain is in compartments and there are some empty compartments. So, when I was asked to give a testimony, I was actually on the blank compartment. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, I thought my wife would be here to actually take over, but I had to do it anyway. It was a very amazing night to sit with our senior pastors in such an environment for them to pour out to us their experience for the past 43 years and how they have journeyed to be where they are now and from the beginning where they didn't have the resources that they have actually managed to put together for us today. And because of those experiences, us, we are so fortunate to actually tap on their experience, their life experiences, and the resources that they have actually put together based on the experiences that they have actually experienced in life. And also one of the things that stood out for me is if you work for the kingdom, you do something for the kingdom, God will take care of your business. Amen. You will never lack and also to tap on the trainings and the teachings, the resources, the tools that a celebration churches international has put together for the marriage, uh, for marriages, for couples within this ministry. I think we should tap and not leave them. Uh, just as a family, we actually learned a lot. And not only for us, one of the things also is we should not be selfish with the blessings that God gives us. We are blessed to be a blessing, to go there and to do more, impact more. So I, I actually encourage all couples, all families, even they are, all those that are upcoming, to tap on these resources that our senior pastors in the church have put together for us. We can actually do more as families. If our families are strong, our church is going to be strong. Thank you. Amen. amen. Let's amen. give a clap amen. offering. Couples in the house. Amen. 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 Really powerful night that, that we had. Um, sobering for me. And uh, on that note, on the tools, if you really want to learn more. So we were still stuck on love languages, five love languages. And now we are going into the life languages that we got to take a peek uh, when the, the shows were sharing with us. Please join us in the couples ministry. In CCJ, in CCP, in Cape Town, we have couples ministry. For CCP um, couples ministry, we are starting a mountaintop marriage. So if you want to join, please uh, register at the information desk or on the church WhatsApp number that will be broadcast shortly. Amen. I think I've just announced the number to those that cannot maybe see. The number is 078 642 now, if you are a leader, uh, whether you're from uh, Johannesburg Church, Pretoria Church, or from Cape Town Church, immediately after the service, there's going to be a very short meeting at the pastor's lounge. So please make sure that after the service, 
um, after you've um, you know, interacted with some of the guests and uh, the people that are in here, make sure that you don't go away, but you go to the pastor's lounge for that short meeting. Amen. Amen. Uh, uh, an impartation meeting. Amen. Let me read this to you and listen to me carefully as I read. Um, Pastor David replied res respectfully, isn't the role of music to help move forward into the presence, presence of God through praise, through surrender, through worship? I don't think the spiritual connection with creation and all people everywhere is supposed to be the goal. By now, Pastor Aaron was frustrated. David, this is what I hired you to do. You, your job is to embrace my vision. Your job is to embrace my vision. The Lord wants a greater connection with us. He really wants you to come close to him through prayer and worship. We know how to praise. We know how to worship. But we know how to connect with the Lord Jesus Christ. Pastor Bonnie, uh, the faithful servant who's been sent to establish this celebration, Churches International, who has got a vision about how we should connect through the way the Lord has revealed to her. Today, we have the mother in the house signing the Greater Connection book. We know we bought it some time ago. So we have book signing at the back of the service. The first 10 people that get there quickly will be able to get their book signed with Pastor, Pastor Bonnie today after service. Amen. Amen. And as if that were not enough, if you do not get your Greater Connection t-shirt, when we have these gatherings in future, we'll be swagging it the same way be that men are swagging in their t-shirts. <laughs> we will be in the Greater Connection t-shirt. So grab one at the information desk at the back. Amen. Amen. What a blessed service it is today. Amen. On that note, let me ask um, Deacon Fanashe to come and take the offering. Amen. So for our offering message uh, this morning, I'm going to read a scripture that we recently read in the book of uh, Second uh, Corinthians in our daily Bible reading program. And I'll read Second Corinthians 8 verses uh, 1 to 7. And now brothers and sisters, we want you to know about the grace that God has given the Macedonian churches. In the midst of a very severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. For I testify that they gave as much as they were able to and even beyond their ability entirely on their own. They urgently pleaded with us for the privilege of sharing in the service to the Lord's people and they exceeded our expectations. They gave themselves first of, first of all to the Lord and then by the will of God also to us. So we urged Titus just as he had, just as he had earlier made a, made a beginning to bring also to completion this act of grace on your part. But since you excel in everything, in faith, in speech, in knowledge, in complete earnestness, and in the love we have kindled in you, see that you also excel in the grace of giving. Excelling in the grace of giving. I read the scripture and was just amazed by the grace that was upon the Macedonian churches. Despite all that they went through and all that they faced, they still excelled in the grace of giving. The scripture says that in the midst of a severe trial, their overflowing joy and their extreme poverty welled up in rich generosity. There's a grace of giving that I believe was upon these Macedonian churches that we should desire to have that should also encourage, encourage and inspire us to give. On a daily basis, we are presented with opportunities where we can give of our time, treasure, or talent. At times, we give excuses. I've got a lot, a, a lot lined up, so I can't give an offering. Things aren't adding up, so I'll give next time. I am busy now, so I can't serve. Excuses. In the Be That Man program, one of the, one of the powerful teachings we received from Pastor Tom is on faithfulness. 
And um, he refers to the parable of the talents that we read in the book of Matthew chapter 25. I'll just quickly share three things that have stood out for me in this teaching. Firstly, faithfulness is a character quality and it has developed over a period of time. Secondly, he says, faithfulness is not tested when things are going well, but when there's an opportunity to be unfaithful. And the third, faithfulness is seen in the way we live our lives, also seen in the way we handle our finances when it comes to giving. So as I close, let us purpose in our hearts to be faithful stewards of all, the, of all that God entrusts us with. At this point, I would just like to invite the ushers to re receive the offering and just kindly note that your tithe goes to your local parish. And um, if you are from CCJ, kindly ask for an envelope and you can just um, indicate on that, um, on that en envelope. And we also have a point, a point of sale machine. And if you'd like to also just swipe, you can kindly make use of that uh, facility. And I'll just pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, we come before your throne this morning. We thank you, Lord, for this time you have given us that we may be able to sow and give into your kingdom. Father, continue to develop in us the desire and ability to be faithful stewards of all that you entrust us with. Father, we pray that we too may excel in the grace of giving. Father, this morning we thank you for all that you have for all that have purposed in their hearts to give cheerfully, for we know that you love a cheerful giver. Father, may you receive this offering and may it be pleasant unto you. Father, may you continue to meet each and every one of your children at their point of need and pour out your abundant blessings upon their lives. Father, we give you all the glory and all the honor. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. At this point, I'd just like to invite Dr. McConey. Hallelujah. Welcome everybody to church on this Resurrection Sunday. I said, welcome to church. You know, where I grew up, I'm a backslid and Anglican. On a day like this, we would say, Christ is risen. And we would say, he's risen indeed. Let's just visit my past a little bit. Christ is risen. Christ is risen. We are alive because he rose again from the dead. Hallelujah. Amen, amen. So we welcome you, everybody, to this incredible service and we are so excited because uh, this is uh, the first time in a very long time that we have uh, our founders, the apostolic leadership of Celebration Ministries International being with us in, uh, in South Africa together. They normally, because they are so busy, they are normally you see one and you don't see the other, but today we are really honored to have both uh, Pastor Tom and Pastor Bonnie with us. So can we just give them a round of applause as we welcome them? Hallelujah. 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 Welcome, welcome, welcome. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. So, so, so good to have you. We are so excited. And, you know, the Bible says, Paul is talking to the, is he right to the Romans, and he says, you know, I have always longed to come to you that I may impart an apostolic blessing. And I believe when we have a, a ministry trip like this, we must be open and ready for an apostolic blessing to receive an impartation uh, from the Lord through the hands of his servants. So I want you to be expectant. I want you to be excited as we anticipate the ministry today. Today is going to be a very exciting and busy day. And as we... Before, I, I'm going to call them up in just a moment, but before I do, we have uh, our children who want to just uh, bless them with, uh, uh, with uh, how would I call it, an offering. I was going to say a performance, but uh, I'm looking at Pastor Bonnie, so I'm like, uh, uh, hallelujah, Th thank you for the permission. So our children are going to do a performance is a service to the Lord. Hallelujah. So as they do, we, I'm looking for a cue somewhere. Where are the children? Okay, while they're getting organized, are they performing from there? Okay. So I, I think to make it easy, Pastor Tom and Pastor Bonnie, will you join me here? I think they're going to walk from all that way from the back. So, slowly, Pastor Tom and Pastor Bonnie, if you walk slowly, sl slowly, walk slowly, slowly, yeah, slowly, while the children's church are coming. Yes, Pastor Tom, Pastor Bonnie, please join me on stage. Thank you. Hallelujah. 
As the children are getting ready, Pastor Tom and Pastor Bonnie, welcome, welcome. Thank, thank you so much, please. Praise God, praise God. Hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Let's give them a round of applause. Let's appreciate job, the children. Hallelujah. 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 Pastor Tom and Pastor Bonnie, will you just join me right here? And I would like to ask uh, our pastors in the house to come and join us. You know, Pastor Tom, um, we normally celebrate birthdays. But in uh, 2024, we, we as a movement, we are so excited, we are so blessed, we decided that it, a day is not enough. So we are celebrating a birth year. So we celebrate your 70th and we are so excited. You know, the Bible says this. It says, um, those who labor in the Lord are worthy of double honor. And we honor you, we honor your service, we honor your contribution to the kingdom of God. And more importantly, we honor the gift that you are. The Bible says when Jesus rose from the dead, he gave gifts to men. And we believe that he has given you to us uh, as a gift for the cause of Christ and for this movement. So we really honor and appreciate what God is doing in you and through you. We are the fruit of your labor. We thank God for you. So we as Celebration Church South Africa, ably hosted and led by Celebration Church Pretoria, have put together a gift to just honor your birthday and to bless you. So we have put together a thousand rand for every year that you have been alive. And it has been transferred into your account. <laughs> Happy birthday, sir. You, you know... So we really thank you. It will be in your South African account. Uh, we, we, we didn't trust you with cash in your hands. <laughs> 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 you, you, you know, Pastor, in my, my mom, you guys are not old, but as my parents got a little bit older, they, there was kind of a tug of war. If we did, if you blessed mom, dad will feel a little bit of jealous. If you blessed dead, mom will feel a little bit jealous. So we, we know it's not Pastor Bonnie's birthday, 
But we do know that the Bible says that um, those who are taught in the word should share in all good things with those who teach them the word. So, mom, we, didn't, we know it's not your 70th yet, but uh, we are honored and we want to bless you with this gift from us. Welcome and thank you so much for your ministry to us and for the time that you have been with us. Amen. So, so, so we, we as pastors and the church will ask the church to stand. We want to just pray a blessing over you and uh, past, particularly Pastor Tom as you uh, during this uh, birthday celebration year. Shall we just stretch our hands to them as we pray? Father, we thank you as we celebrate Pastor Tom's birthday. We thank you, Father, for the gift of life. We thank you, Father, that you have made him a gift not only to the celebration movement but to the body of Christ. Father, today as we celebrate, even this whole year, as we celebrate his 70th, Father, we thank you for prophetic fulfillment. We thank you that you are bringing to pass all those words that you have spoken into his life. We thank you for the fulfillment of the assignment of God. We thank you for the fulfillment of the mandate that you have given him. Father, we thank you that, Father, you will fulfill your purposes. By your grace, you strengthen him, you enable him, you empower him to fulfill your purposes. So we give you the glory, we give you the honor. Father, we thank you that even his latter years will be greater, his impact will be greater, his influence. The, you are raising him to be a testament, to speak to the body of Christ, to speak to the movement an apostolic voice which will be heard loud and clear. Father, even as you have said, you said I have sent you to Africa and I have sent you particularly to Zimbabwe, but I have given and you a ministry to the world. Father, we thank you that this is a season, this is a moment that you are amplifying his voice. Father, you are amplifying his voice as he speaks beyond the continent of Africa. His voice is heard loud and clear across the world. Even as you promise, we thank you and we honor you. Father, we speak life. We speak health. We speak strength. We speak vitality. Father, may he enjoy his days. Father, may his days be like the days of Moses. Father, whose eyes did not weigh in his strength did not wane as he saved you. So we thank you, we honor you, and we bless you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen and amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you so much, Pastor. Hallelujah. Oh, wow. Hallelujah. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, Pastor Tom. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. All right, now you need to sing the celebration one. Happy birthday. you because God made you we celebrate you today Pastor Tom on behalf of Celebration Church South Africa on behalf of our regional pastors Dr. McCordney, Pastor Audrey Dr. Javu, Pastor Barbara we wish you a happy birthday and many, many, many more years, according to Psalm 91. May the Lord grant you many, many more years. And we speak Psalm 52, verse 8 upon you. You are an olive tree flourishing in the house of the Lord. Pastor Tom, we declare that you are just starting the best season of your life. And we celebrate with you. Thank you, Pastor. Bless you guys. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Guys, are you not supposed to do something with those uh, balloons? 
Oh yeah, yeah. Wow. Come on guys, release those balloons, release those balloons. Yay, 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 yay. Thank you, thank you. Th thank you so much guys, thank you. B bless you, go ahead and take your seats if you will. Hallelujah. Okay. Thank, thank you guys, you can, you can walk down now, you can walk down. Hallelujah. Pr praise God. Thank you church, go ahead and take your seats if you will. Let me see if I can create order here. Guys, can we get our balloons and... Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Hallelujah. So as the, as the kids clear the stage, would you just turn your eyes to the screen? Uh, hallelujah. Standing in line to be baptized when through the crowd a stranger came, his eyes were warm, his clothes were plain, but yet something was very different. He was no He spoke were words of love by his holy presence they were overcome then John stepped up to behold this man his face of Such as I.
Thank you for the resurrection of Jesus. We thank you for his life, for his death. We thank you that you gave him to us. And may every person in here understand that. And I want to ask you this morning to come forward for a few minutes as we worship him. Just come forward. We're to rejoice, yes, but we're to worship as well. I, I wrote a book. I need that pulpit. I wrote a book called The Great Connection. And that great connection explains how we are to praise him. Seven Hebrew words that show us, come and be with us up here, just in praise and worship. Seven Hebrew words that show us how to praise him. One is yada, who knows yada? To praise the to raise the hands to worship him. Seven Hebrew words. The second is tauda, which is a sacrifice of praise with uplifted hands. You know, we come into his presence with singing and into his courts with praise. We should praise him with uplifted hands. Everybody try. It's a sacrifice, but it's one he commanded us to do. He created us to praise him with uplifted hands. And shaka with a shout, which we often know what to do about the shout. There's another tehillah, but that's in my first book, The Great Connection. 
All these praise come into his gates with thanksgiving, enter his gates with praise. But then we are to worship him in spirit and in truth. And that is goes further from an outer court, as he put it, an outer court, an inner court, and a holy of holies. When Adam and Eve were before God, they lived in his presence and they were deceived. And when they were and took the fruit, the forbidden fruit, that glory, that cloud, that presence fell to the ground and no one. And they died. But God gave a pattern back. Outer court, inner court, holy of holies in the tabernacle and said, do you get there? One priest one time a year could be there. One priest. And if you, and they had to tie a rope around his neck. Turn me down, please. They had to tie a rope around his neck. His leg. <laughs> because if he came in and he had sin, he would die. But Jesus Christ said, Father, the glory you have given me, I have given them that they may be one. Through his blood, his death, his resurrection, we now have opportunity to enter into his presence. Leviticus 9 says, if you will do what I command you, my glory will be with you. My presence, you were created to live in his presence. Oh, what a wonder when I call you that you hear me and you deliver me from all my fears Lord your praises will be on my lips forever and my soul will make its boast in you some trust in chariots and some in horses but we remember the name of
So my first book that I was telling you about was Great Connection. And it really focused on rejoicing and praising him because that's the pattern. Outer court, turn me down. Outer court, inner court, holy of holies. But we want to get to the holy of holies and magnify the Lord together. So I wrote the second book. It only took me 12 years or 15 or 20 to do the greater connection. And just to tell you, and I want you to know that my calling, in 1980 when I found my diary that said, I have founded my calling to praise God and to stir up others to do the same. To stir you up to do the same. So in this book, there is a girl called Harmony. And Harmony is on her way trying to get people to praise the Lord in her church. And a girl named Gabby, an old lady, (laughs) came and took her on the journey of how to do it through the seven Hebrew words. In this book, there's a man named David, a young man. And he wants to do the same. And he went to Harmony and said, how do I praise? How do I teach my people to praise? And just then, 10, 12, 15 years later, Gabby showed up, the old lady, and took them both on a journey and took them to where Lazarus and Mary and Martha were. And I'm going to read one portion of it so you can understand what it was all about. And you may go to the same place. So in this piece, Harmony, David, and Gabby are with Mary and Martha and Lazarus. And Harmony is shocked at the fact that Mary worshipped Jesus. And here's how it goes. There was nothing Harmony could do to stop her tears from rolling down her cheeks. True to Mary's sensitivity, she instantly handed her a cloth, which to wipe her eyes. Mary, you worshiped at his feet, Harmony said softly. Please tell me. And as her voice trailed off, Mary held Harmony's hands in hers and she gazed intently into her eyes. It was one of the most powerful experiences of my life. We knew Yeshua was the Messiah. How amazing that he chose us as his friends. And he stayed in our home. Our Lord had already missed my brother from the, had raised my brother from the dead when he came home. And it was six days before Passover. And we all wanted to honor him because he'd given us so much. Martha wanted to serve him. So she prepared the meal. Lazarus reclined at the table to be with him and just wanted to be close and listen to him. But I knew Lazarus and Martha were doing what they were, what was most appropriate. But me, even though I was frightened and I don't like attention, I was just drawn to kneel and worship at his feet. Worship is the highest response we can have and give to our Messiah who has done everything for us. Mary continued as her voice steadied. As I walked to the room to get my perfume, I knew I would be breaking all the rules. I also knew how angry Judas would be because the perfume was so expensive. But what is worship if it doesn't cost you anything? I wanted him to know how much I loved him. And although I knew that kneeling and putting my hair out to wipe his feet would be considered inappropriate. I didn't care at that moment. I just knew I was supposed to bring an offering of worship to my Lord. Mary, did you know he was going to die? David asked. Yeshua warned us of all these things, but I didn't think he was going to die in a week. Of course, our father knew that he wanted me to anoint his son before he died. I didn't understand it. All I knew, I just wanted to worship him with my entire being. Now for you. The untold pain, the 
deepest agony you're going through, the wounded suffering heart, the unrelenting need, unresolved dispute, words of hate that scar, true love unreturned, a promise broken. Whatever you've suffered, the Lord has restored. Infected flesh, difficult to breathe. Virus in the blood, life-threatening disease. The blueness of the wound, the pressure of the pain, eyes that need the light, a bone that's broken. Whatever you've suffered, the Lord has restored. He took it to the cross. Took him to the cross, nothing left to chance. He suffered for a loss. He took him to the cross, he took him to the cross. Life has been restored, covered by his blood. He took him to the cross.
Father, we worship you, we worship you, we glorify you, we magnify you, we yes. declare that you are the King of kings. We thank you that you sent your son Jesus. Not only did he live in the earth, not only was he born here, obeyed you through the waters of baptism, but Father, he died, was buried, and was resurrected. We thank you for his life that we might have life eternal. We worship you this morning. 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 We worship you. Heavenly Father, we worship you. We glorify you. Come on, just say it one more time. We worship you, Lord. Tell him in your own words. Tell him with your own song. Hallelujah. Whenever we're in the presence of God, whenever you sense His presence, the Bible talked about one time that Jesus was in a house and it says that the presence of God was present. The power of God was present to heal everybody. But nobody was getting healed. I'm telling you the presence of God is here. The power of God is here. And it's able to heal you. This atmosphere. Right now, if you're sick in your body, if you're sick anywhere, put your hand wherever that pain, that sickness, that disease is. Just put it right there. Put your hand there. Father, we declare that your healing power is present. I command healing in the name of Jesus in every body, in every mind, every heart. Father, you paid the price through your son, Jesus. Now use your glorious presence and touch. Heal. Let the breath of your spirit breathe life into these bones. Breathe life into these circulatory systems. Breathe life into the respiratory system. Every fiber, every bone, every tissue, we curse cancer, we curse sickness, we curse disease, we curse autoimmune deficiency, we come against tumors, we come against every fibroid, we come against every growth in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you that every open wound is healing now in Jesus' name. We thank you that, Father, every issue of blood is drying up. We thank you that every barren womb is being made fertile in Jesus' name. We curse every curse. We declare that we are part of the redeemed. The redeemed of the Lord are saying that we are healed. Let the redeemed say so. I am healed in Jesus' name. I am blessed in Jesus' name. I am free in Jesus' name. I come against every infirmity, every demonic infirmity in the name of Jesus. We bind demonic activity in every heart, every mind, every family. We break the curse of iniquity. We take responsibility now and we declare that curses are broken over our family. That long inherited sickness, inherited disease, inherited habits are broken today in the name of Jesus. We come against alcoholism. We come against, Father, addiction of any sort, and we bind it in Jesus' name. And we receive our freedom today in the name of Jesus. We receive our healing today in the name of Jesus. Now, if you've received, just begin to praise Him. Begin to thank Him. <laughs> Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. But there's healing in this place. Amen. Thank you, Pastor Bonnie, for leading us into the presence. You guys were amazing today. Wow, wow, wow. What I'd like you to do is I'd like you to find two or three people, and I'd like you to look them in the eye and say, you know, God's healing power did touch me today, and I'm confessing that by his stripes I'm healed. And then bless somebody. Bless them. You can go ahead and take your seats. Just wait. Just came to three places. 
condition your, your lateral microscope was falling at, at the neck. And as you're taking your seats, I want to ask this, this lady here, I want to ask this lady, why are you here today? <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> I'm here because Amai invited me. <laughs> and um, I met her yesterday. I saw her yesterday. I was, I was going through a phase where I've got two job offers and I was praying and I'm like, Lord, what must I do? I don't know what to do. And I'm a former, um, I can't say former, I used to the CPA in Harare <laughs> 21 years ago. So I'm sitting, looking out of the window, and I'm asking God, what must I do? And then I see Pastor Bonnie, <laughs> and I ran out. <laughs> I just ran out, and I said, God has answered me. I spent like 10 minutes or so with her, but <laughs> I feel healed. I feel strengthened, even when we were singing. The same effect you had 21 years ago, as you are praying, as you're praying, people are being healed. Your voice, I saw in 21 years, 2003, Pastor Bonnie was in a bus, touring, in aero, going in aeroplanes. She was going from country to country, and she was singing. People were being healed. People were just standing up and crying. You have the same effect. It's still here. I was supposed to work a morning shift yesterday. Pastor Bonnie told my boss, no, she's coming to church. <laughs> so I'm here. I'm here. Good to see you, Bob. Good to see you. Thank Amen. you. Amen. So. so I do have to say this. She works at a restaurant, and my wife comes back bearing gifts from the restaurant, you know, the, Sweet potato fries. <laughs> healthy, healthy. But uh, we're glad you're here. And are there any other people that are visiting for the very first time? You say, man, this is my first time in a celebration ministries. You know, if it is, we're so welcome. We want to welcome you. We're so glad you're here. God bless you. Thank you. God bless you. God bless you. You know, this is a family, and, and um, there's three things that we emphasize in our churches. Number one is the word of God. We want to have doctrinal accuracy. There's so much weird stuff going on out there today. We need to go back to really strong doctrine. We also want the presence of God. The, the Bible says we worship him in spirit and in truth. We've received that through the gifts of the Holy Spirit, but we also receive it through worship. Worship plays a very, very important part in what we do. More can happen in his presence when we enter into his presence. And we can only do that corporately through worship. And God wants you to corporately worship him. And that's why we gather together. And it's important that you gather together. It's important that we gather as the church. You can't get this anywhere. You can't get this alone, I'm sorry. Now you can have a touch of God, but you can't have this. And where two or three agree, or when we get together in a company, he shows up in a different way. Worship, his presence, is the predecessor to revelation. And if you have presence, you have the ability to open your hearts and minds for revelation. That's why we worship before. We send the praisers out before we go to war, before we begin to bring the word of God. And then the third thing that we celebrate in our churches is relationships. You know, the church has become very transactional around the world. It's just what you do. We don't want that. We want to build real relationships. That's why we have our men's movement and our women's movement. Those are based in building relationships. And I can tell you that we're going to need each other in the days to come. The days are coming when you're going to need real relationships. And uh, I'm so grateful that we've invested in building people, building dreams, so we can build the kingdom of God. And we do that by transforming lives ultimately that we can reform the nations. And you reform a nation by building strong 
families, strong churches, and then in each of your domains, you take responsibility to be an influence for the kingdom of God. So we love you. Pastor Bonnie and I are so happy to be here with you. You want to say something? Go ahead. I just want to say, I just know you. And I just want to hug you all. Amen. Amen. So I want to encourage you at the end of the service, uh, if you haven't received, if you haven't picked up a copy of Pastor Bonnie's book, The Greater Connection, or The Great Connection. If you haven't read The Great Connection, you need to read that before you get The Greater Connection. But uh, both of the books are outstanding. And uh, I want to encourage you to pick them up. Uh, my wife is, uh, we both write books, but she's the better writer. So I want to encourage you, get her books. You'll love her. Amen. Praise God. Let's give a hand to the band and the choir. Thank you, guys. God bless you. You can take your seats. I'm going to preach a little bit, and then we have a very special day today. We're going to graduate some people from our men's movement, from our women's movement. And uh, so we have a little bit of an elongated service, but aren't you glad we were in the presence of the Lord? Amen. Amen. Now there's a little bit of echo on that. If you could just tune me down just a little bit where it doesn't echo, where there's no too much reverb, okay? I'm going to talk to you today uh, about resurrection power. And you know, what, we have to, what we've come to understand is, and I want you to understand that although today the world celebrates what they call Easter. Easter is really a pagan holiday. It's, it was adopted by uh, an early church uh, mandate. Uh, Easter was never really celebrated. The church was originally Jewish and they celebrated Passover. But as we became Romanized, we began to adopt the Roman pagan holidays into Christianity. Christmas Jesus wasn't born in December. Uh, I'm sorry, Jesus was probably born in October, maybe September, that time of year. <laughs> I, I know I'm blowing some of your minds today, but, uh, and, and, and Easter, we, we, Easter it was, was probably at the Passover, today is Passover, and so Passover was a very important time in Jewish faith. But the, 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 the Roman church did, uh, adopt what was called the worship of Ishtar. Ishtar was a pagan god, and then we got the name Easter, and it has all kinds of weird things in it. Uh, bunny rabbits, and uh, eggs, and uh, you know, and if you go back, if you really want to study this, you can go back and study a guy named Tammuz. We get, the, the Bible talks about Nimrod, it, it, the, the, the worship called Saturnalia, and all this is just really bogus stuff and it's crept into the church like so much is creeping into the church today that it's important that we're not against you know worshiping Jesus and his resurrection but the resurrection isn't something we do on a day the resurrection is something that we live every day Jesus was raised from the dead so that you and I might live in a resurrected life even in churches today there are many churches today that don't go beyond the cross how many of you know that Jesus died on the cross and he paid for our sins and that's very important. His blood was shed for our sins. But had he not been raised from the dead, had he not been resurrected, that would have been in vain. So it's the whole package. Jesus was born. He came into the world as a man. He was God. He is God. And he came as a man. And he, he took his rightful place. And like you and I, he walked on this earth but without sin. And then in the place of the blood of bulls and goats, Jesus became the Lamb of God who took away the sins of the world, all of our sins, all of mankind's sins. And he went willfully to the cross and he died on the cross for you and I that we might be forgiven of our sins, that he might pay the full penalty, the full price of our sins. So not only did he die and not only was he buried for three days, but he was raised from the dead. And that resurrection power is what gives you and I the power to live godly lives. Live lives that can be very, very powerfully lived on earth. And God wants you to step into resurrection power and live in resurrection power. And so I want to just talk about that a little bit. Because 
Really, this is the central point of Christianity. Resurrection power. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. And it's the very basis of our faith. Without a resurrection, without a living Savior, without a living God, then we're just like any other religion. How many of you know that I can take you to the grave of Buddha? I can take you to the grave of Muhammad. We can go to all the graves of the other great religious leaders. But when you go to the grave of Jesus, the tomb is empty. He's not dead. He's alive. And he is enforcing the defeat of our enemy, the devil, every single day of our lives. We have a living God. Amen. So in John, the 20th chapter, verses 1 through 18, it said, On the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene early, when it was yet dark, into the sepulcher, and seeth that the stone had been taken away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and came to Simon Peter and to the other disciple whom Jesus loved and said to them, They have taken away the Lord out of the sepulcher, and we do not know where they have laid him. Peter therefore went forth and that other disciple, and they came to the sepulcher. So they ran both together, and the other disciple outran Peter and came to the first sepulchre. First sepulchre. There was no competition amongst the, the, the apostles. I can see they're competing. I, I outran. I was first. And he stooped down and he looked in. And he saw the linen clothes lying there. Yet went he not in. Then cometh Simon Peter following him and went into the sepulchre and seeth the linen clothes lying there. And the napkin that was about his head was not lying with the linen clothes, but was wrapped together in a place by itself. Then went in also that other disciple, which came first to the sepulcher, and he saw, and he believed. For as yet they knew not the scripture that he must raise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own home. But Mary stood without the sepulcher weeping, and as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher, and she saw two angels in white, sitting one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. And they said to her, Woman, why weepest thou? And she said unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back, and she saw Jesus standing there, and knew not that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to her, Woman, why do you weep? Whom seekest thou? And she, supposing that he was a gardener, said to him, Sir, if thou have borne him hence, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said unto her, Mary, and she turned herself and she said, Rabbi. She recognized him when he called her Mary, and that is to say, Master. Jesus said unto her, Don't touch me, for I have not yet ascended to my Father, but go to my brethren and say unto them, I ascend to my Father and your Father, and to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene came and told the disciples that she had seen the Lord and that she had spoken these things and, and that he had spoken these things unto her. Then the same day at evening, being the first day of the week, when the doors were shut, where the disciples were assembled for fear of the Jews, came Jesus and stood in the midst of them and said, Peace be unto you. Like I said earlier, the, 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 the resurrection of Jesus is one of the central points of the faith of Christianity. In fact, without a resurrection, we have a dead religion. The resurrection should not just be a day that we celebrate, but a reality that affects our daily living. Through obedience, the obedience of Jesus dying on the cross and then being buried, then being risen from the dead. You and I have access the Bible says that he was the firstborn among many brethren. He was the first fruit. How many of you know that we're the many brethren that he was the firstborn of? We have been transformed into a new family, the family of God. And the Apostle Paul kind of declared it another way. He spoke of what he expected for himself and what he expected for other believers to experience in regard to the resurrection power that Jesus had given to the church. And I, you know, I, I want the same power that Paul wanted to work in my life. How about you? Listen to what he said in Philippians 3 and verse 10. He says that I might know him. I want to know him and the power 
of his resurrection and the fellowship of his sufferings. And I want to be conformed or transformed to his death. That's a powerful prayer that he just prayed. And the purpose of our message this morning will be that we may all, in many ways, become like Paul. That we might begin to experience resurrection power in our lives. That we might know him in the power of his resurrection, in the fellowship of his sufferings, and in the conformity to his death. We're going to look at four key points. I'm going to do it quickly. And we're going to talk about the four key points I believe that are around resurrection power. First of all, it has the power to convert us. Now, many people don't preach the message of the gospel anymore. Most of our churches are not preaching the gospel. They're preaching something else. Many churches talk about a gospel of salvation. Jesus never preached the gospel of salvation. Jesus preached the gospel of the kingdom. The kingdom of God is, is a part of the salvation message, or the salvation message is a part of the kingdom of God, but it is not the entirety of the gospel of the kingdom of God. The gospel of the kingdom of God is much more broad, much more powerful, and Jesus told us, go into all the world and preach this gospel, the gospel of the kingdom. He says, and once this kingdom gospel is preached everywhere, then the end shall come. And so what we've done is we've seen a lot of evangelists around the world that have preached salvation, and what we have is a church that thinks they're saved, but they're not living in the kingdom. Africa is especially sick in this way. Reinhard Bonnke, before he died, said that although, and he's probably led more people in salvation than anybody, he said, but the doctrine of Africa is a thousand miles wide, but an inch deep. And you can see it today. Our African churches are filled with all kinds of nonsense. These prophets that run around and they call this Christianity. They're selling indulgences. They're, they're selling themselves. They're, 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 they're fleecing people. They're controlling and manipulating. They're using witchcraft. It's a divination. They're no more prophets. Let me tell you something. They are diviners. They're like Simon the sorcerer. And some of you, even in this congregation, run after them, thinking that by one of those super prophets, you're going to receive something from them. I'm going to tell you, you will receive something, but it will not be the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God was purchased for us by the shed blood of Jesus Christ. It's not vested in a man. It's vested in Christ. The gospel of Jesus Christ is not in your pastor. It's not in the man of God. It is in Jesus. And we look to Jesus. He's the author. He's the perfecter of our faith. He is the beginning. He is the end. And anytime a man draws you after himself, it is error. Anytime you're following a man, you're in error. Every man of God should, now you, you're, look, you're part of a movement that God's using a man of God. That's fantastic. But you're not worshiping the man of God and you're not following the man. We're following Jesus. Follow Christ. Follow me like I follow Christ. That was Paul's message. And so this gospel of the kingdom is a kingdom message that we enter into. We are translated out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of his dear son. Now, every one of you that's a part of the kingdom of God should learn to tell two stories. The first story you need to tell is your story. How did you come out of darkness and into light? Do you even know how to tell your story? And your story is really not that important other than it's a sedge into telling God's story. But you can tell your story accurately and you can help people come out of their darkness, out of their sickness, out of their sin-sick world into the kingdom of God if you learn how to tell your story correctly and lead them to a place that you can tell God's story. Now many people don't know God's story. And how do we lead people to Jesus if we don't know God's story? God's story is this, that God created a perfect man. He created a perfect world. He said it's good, and in fact, it's very good. And man, in his perfectness, was deceived by a fallen angel. That fallen angel deceived Adam and Eve. Eve was deceived. Man willfully, Adam willfully sinned. And they partook of something that had been forbidden. Pastor Bonnie was mentioning that this morning. We partook of something that was forbidden to us. 
And in so doing, we lost the glory. We lost our covering. We lost what God had intended for us. And we committed high treason against God. God had given us dominion over the earth. And by disobeying him, by, by rebelling against him, we became a part of a rebellion, the rebellion of our father, the devil. We became the sons and daughters of the devil, no longer the sons and daughters of God. We were separated from God by sin. And God drove us from the garden, but he made a way of escape. He said, I will make a plan for you that you can be redeemed. He says, and right now, he says, what we'll do is we'll use the blood of bulls and goats for a season. And he said, I'll cover your sins. He says, but there'll come a day that I'll send the Son of God, the Lamb of God, and he will take away the sins of the whole world. And he brings us to a point where if every human being can be saved, we were saved, then there comes a day that you are saved. You can accept Jesus Christ. And we are separated from him, but you can be joined back to him. You can have fellowship with the Father. This is God's story. But you must do something. You must repent of your sin and the sin of the world. And you must, because you've, you've joined in this sin. We've all become sinners now. And we have to renounce our father, the father of darkness, and enter into the kingdom of his dear son. We need to accept Jesus Christ. The cross is the place where our lives are exchanged. We exchange death for life. We exchange the curse for blessing. We exchange the the, the, the uh, ab uh, a place where we'll be abandoned forever to a place of relationship with the Father. Through the mediation of Jesus Christ and Him alone, no church can save you. No religion can save you. I don't care what religion you are, that cannot save you. You can tell me all day long you belong to Celebration Church. I don't care. That does not make you go to heaven. Only Jesus makes you go to heaven. My mom and dad were Christians. I don't care. Your mom and dad, God has no grandchildren. God, your, your mom and dad may be in heaven, but you're going to hell without Jesus Christ. And God makes a big separation. He wants us to tell his story. The Bible says, for all have sinned and all fall short of the glory of God. Romans 3.23. 1, 1 John 1, 1.8 says, if we say that we have no sin... We deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. So what's the solution? We must all come to a place of receiving Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior because he purchased your salvation by taking your place and paying the price for yours and my sin and the sins of the world. He not only died for your sins, not only shed all of his blood for your sins, he was buried and raised from the dead to give you and I the power to walk in resurrection power. Amen. It's through the resurrection that we're given the opportunity to be changed and translated into the kingdom of light. Amen? amen. Tap your neighbor and say, I think his preaching is better than your amening this morning. <laughs> Ephesians chapter 2, I'm going to just read this because it really ties into this. It says, and you... He made alive who were dead in trespasses and sins in which you once walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience, among whom also we, were all, we, all, we all once conducted ourselves in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, just as others. But God, but God, everybody say, but God. Who but God, who was rich in mercy because of his great love with, he, with, with which he loved us, even when we were dead in trespasses, made us alive together with Christ, by grace you've been saved, and raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. That in the ages to come, he might show the exceeding riches of his grace and his kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace... You've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works. That means you can't be good enough. You're not good enough. None of us are good enough, lest anyone should boast. For we are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God has prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. Whew. You know, to be converted is very important. And it doesn't just mean that you change your mind. To be converted means that you're totally changed. 
you become something new. In 2 Corinthians chapter 5 and verse 17, it says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. Old things have passed away. Behold, all things are become new. All things are become new. I want you to know something. We have been saved. And when you're saved, you become different. The daily reading today said that the, Jesus looked at the, at the uh, Pharisees and he says, Give me fruit. Show me fruit, meat of your repentance. When you get saved, you don't keep sinning. You don't keep living a wild life. Something happens. You become a new creature in Christ Jesus. And that's the power of the resurrection. Now, to be converted, and I'm laboring this this morning. I don't know why, but I feel like somebody needs to be born again today. Some of you, maybe young people, you've not given your life to Jesus. But to be converted, we must believe, we must confess, we must repent, and we must receive. The Bible says this in John 3, 16 and 17. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Now, what you just heard right there is the gospel. That is the gospel. Every one of you should be able to tell the gospel to anybody you meet. Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Amen? Amen? Hallelujah. Number two, the resurrection, resurrection power has conquering power. And to conquer means to subdue. It means to win. It means to overcome by force. And I want you to know there's a lot that Jesus conquered through his death, his burial, and resurrection. A lot that he overcame on behalf, or on our behalf because of his resurrection. He, he overcame sin, sickness, iniquity. Death in the grave. The Bible declares that on the third day when Jesus was resurrected from the grave, death, hell, and the grave could not hold him. No matter how hard the enemy tried, Jesus could not be stopped. And he's still not being stopped. That's why I was so confident to pray for your healing this morning. Because he's still healing. That's why I'm so confident that even as you sit under the teaching of this word, the power of God is releasing some of you. Some of you are getting a revelation. Some of you are being convicted of sin. Some of you are being convinced that God wants to heal you. That Jesus paid the full price. As Christians, we must walk in resurrection power that cannot be stopped. We must conquer and have a conquering power in our lives, in everything that we touch, in everything that we do. Romans 8, 37 and through 39 says this, Yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. I want you to know something. We are more than conquerors through him, through Christ, in him. And God wants you to live that way. There's nothing that can stop you. There's no power, whether above the ground, on the ground, or under the ground, that can stop you in the name of Jesus. But you must walk in the resurrection power that was purchased for you on the cross of Calvary and out of the, res out of the grave. There is no storm. There's no valley. There's no attack. There's no need that God can't handle. Ephesians 1, verses 18 through 21. Let me pray this for you. This is Paul's prayer. He says, may the eyes of your understanding be enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power toward us who believe. What is that power? That's resurrection power. According to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ Jesus when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in heavenly places, far above all principality and power and might and dominion, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but the one to come. That's the power that you and I operate. I wish that you would be enlightened. I wish you'd understand just how much power is operating in your life. Just how much power you have to deliver your family. Just how much power you have to deliver those around you. Just how much power Jesus 
put it on the inside of you. But see, the eyes of our understanding is being darkened all the time. We're being challenged all the time. We're told that science has the power today. I'm telling you, science will be proven to be foolishness. The wisdom of man will be the foolishness of God. God's wisdom will outshine it all. Mark, mark my words. Oh, you think it's great today. Just give it a few more years and you're going to find out that a lot of what they call science was hoax. Foolishness. Pure foolishness. It's designed. The wisdom of man can never stand or hold a candle to the wisdom of God, the power of God. Number three, it has transforming power. The, the power of the resurrection transforms us. Romans 12, 1 through 2, I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world. But be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove the good, acceptable, and perfect will of God. A process of transformation begins in the heart of every believer when you first accept Jesus. The Bible tells us and challenges us to be transformed into Christ, into what Christ looks like, not according to this world. You know, I'm very concerned today that many Christians are not ingesting enough of the word of God, not ingesting enough worship, not taking enough of the nourishment that they need to be transformed by renewing their mind. You must renew your mind to something, and that has to be renewed to the word of God, renewed to the presence of God. If you spend all your time in the presence of your enemy, if you spend all your time watching what the enemy is telling you, you will be transformed into the presence, in, into what the enemy is telling you. You cannot spend five, six, seven hours a day on TikTok and then think that you're going to be full of the wisdom of God. You need to put some of these worldly things aside, limit your time there, and begin to be renewed in the spirit of your mind with the word of God. The Bible uses the idea of clay, clay, to reveal the aspect of God's plan. We have to become workable, moldable, shapeable in his hands. Just like clay is molded in the hands of the potter, so you and I must be molded in the hands of God. And we can't say to the potter, or the, pot, the clay can't say to the potter, why did you make me this way? We can't say to God, why are you doing this in my life? We have to say, God, make me, mold me, shape me, do what you want with me. Not my will be done, but thine be done. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Tap your neighbor and say, I still think he's preaching better than your amening this morning. Philippians 1.6 says this, being confident of this very thing, that he who began a good work in you will complete it till the day of Jesus Christ. How many of you think that God's not done with you yet? Just tap your neighbor and say, I think he's talking about you now. Just tell him, God's not done with you yet. Turn to your other neighbor and say, you're a pretty ugly lump of clay right now. <laughs> Well, how does this resurrection power transform us? We have to understand that God works with resurrection power by the power of his Holy Spirit in our lives. And he says he sent the Holy Spirit to do three things. To convict us of sin, to convict us of living a righteous life, sin, righteousness, and of judgment. There's a judgment that's coming on the earth. And let me tell you something. All three of those things work. God, will, God is working with you, and you know when you're sinning. Tap your neighbor and say, I know when I'm sinning. Just tell you, I know when I sin. See, and so the minute that you feel that conviction, you should stop sinning. He convicts the world of sin, the world of sin, but he also convicts believers of sin, of righteousness. God, you know when you're walking righteously. Do you know when you're walking righteously? You know you have that bubbling up, that kind of sense of, hey, this is how I'm supposed to be living. Kind of like in church right now. How many of you felt good after the worship? Woo, that was great. I, I felt washed. I felt cleansed. That's how, you, that's how you know you're walking in righteousness. See, forsake your sin and walk righteously. He who is faithful and just to confess their sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and to cleanse you of all unrighteousness. And then he says there's a judgment to come. Well, I'll tell you what, one of the things I'm very aware of is that there's judgment coming on the earth. 
judgment. I don't want to be under God's judgment. How about you? So I'm going to live a holy life. I'm going to live in resurrection power. And finally, it has confirming power. Confirming power. And, and that word confirm simply means to establish or to support the truth of something. In other words, it's a confirmation that what you're doing is right. It's a confirmation of the truth is right. Uh, the resurrection power of God confirms that just as Jesus was resurrected, so are you and I going to be resurrected one day. I, we have a confirmation that the same hope that, or the, the, the fact that he was resurrected gives us a hope that we will be. Just as death could not hold Jesus, so death will not be able to hold our mortal bodies. 1 Corinthians 15 says this, verses 42 through 44, So also is the resurrection of the dead. The body is sown in corruption, it is raised in incorruption. It's sown in dishonor, it is raised in glory. It's sown in weakness, it's raised in power. It's sown a natural body, but it's raised a spiritual body. There is a natural body, and there is a spiritual body. Verse 54 says, So when this corruptible body has put on incorruption, and this mortal has put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death! Where is your sting? Oh, Hades, where is your victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Guys, there's a day coming when we will be with God in a glorified state and we'll live with him forever. When we die, we immediately go to be with the Lord. But on the resurrection day, on the day that our bodies, I don't know what day that is. Some of you believe in a rapture. Some of you believe, I, I think there'll be a day when the Lord comes and the saints will join him in the air. But our bodies will come up out of the grave. And if we've, di if we're, if we've died or if we're still living, our bodies will be instantly changed. We'll be transformed. We'll be like him. And we will... Be with him. Either way, our bodies are going to be take on an immortality and be perfect in every way. That day's coming. Amen. Say, tell somebody, I, I can't wait to get rid of this body and get my resurrected body. Amen. So let me just close. God wants us to experience Jesus' resurrection power in our lives. It is an available power. It's a necessary power, especially in these evil days that we live in. You must have somebody to combat the evil of our generation. And it had better be resurrection power. The key to walking in power is found in revelation, the knowledge of God. Not head knowledge. See, many people, they think if you just get a little bit of head knowledge, read a good book. Oh, yeah, I know about that. No, 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 no. The revelation power of God is that he gives you a word for you, a word that changes you, a word that transforms you. We call it a rhema word. You have the logos, you can read that all day long and it, it'll bless you. But you get a rhema word, it'll change you. In the twinkling of an eye, that word jumps off the page, it transforms you, it makes your life different. It, it's something, you. it motivates you, it makes you move, it makes you act on it. And when you believe that and act upon it, it'll come to pass in your life. And we need those rhema words. So this morning, I believe that there are people here that need to experience Christ's resurrection power. Some of you need salvation. Some of you are not born again. Yeah, but I go to church. I don't care. Church will not save you. Going to church does not save a person any more than being sitting in a garage makes you a Volkswagen. Are you following me? The Bible tells me as a man of God that I'm to command men and women, boys and girls, I'm to command you to repent. Turn away from your sin and come to Jesus. So wherever you're at in this auditorium today, if you've never given your life to Jesus, 
Raise your hand now. Say, I need Christ. I, I'm, 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 I am a sinner. I'm convicted. I need resurrection power in my life. I need to be born again. I need to repent of my sin and I need to come to Christ. Just raise your hand wherever you're at. Say, that's me. I want to give you that opportunity. It would be remiss of me not to allow you to be born again. Is there anybody here? Any of the young people up there in the balcony? If you do not know Jesus, God bless you. There's a hand there. Anybody else? Another hand, another hand, another hand, another hand. Anybody in the auditorium? Just raise your hand. I'm not making it easy. It's not bow your head and close your eyes. It's, no, you're a sinner just like me, and we all need to make a decision one day that says, I, I'm not ashamed of the gospel. It saved me, and it'll save me. Amen? Let's all stand. If you're here and you raised your hand, or you should have raised your hand, if you're in the balcony, just quickly come down. Just come down. If you're in the balcony and you raised your hand, or you should have raised your hand, I want to pray for you. Just come and stand right here in the front of the auditorium, right here, right here. If you're, standing, if you're standing out here and you didn't raise your hand, but you should have, get down here right now. Maybe you, come on. Here they come. This is the day to repent. This is the day to come to the Lord. This is the day to say, oh God, I need your power in my life. Just stand right up here. Come right up here. Just come right up close to me. Come right up here. Just come right up close to me. Over, come over on the side over here. Come on, here's some more. Come on, come on. I want to give my life to Christ. Amen. No, just leave him right here. Come, just stay up. Come over here. Just get over here. Come on, right. Come, come. No, you're right. You're fine. Just stack up. Just stack up here. I want to get right. I want to see your eyes. God wants to do something. God's doing something. Can you feel that? Yeah, God's touched your heart. You know, there's somebody here, and you need to get out of your seat, and you need to be down here. You think that because you've been to church your whole life that you're a Christian. You're not. You know that what God's doing in your heart right now, your heart is beating a thousand beats a minute. God's talking to you. Pride is the strength of sin. Pride keeps us from responding to God. Pride keeps us from saying, oh, God, I need you. God, I want you. God, I desire you. Pride keeps us from receiving what God has for us. Many people have not received salvation because they're too proud. Others, they think they're good enough. Oh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I, do, I do good things. There's somebody else that says, I'm just so bad that God could never forgive me. You don't know how bad I am. Can I tell you something? It was never about how good you were or how bad you were. It was about what Jesus did. He paid the price for every man. The Bible said that if you were 10,000 miles away from him, he would run to you. And he would stand at the door of your heart and he would knock. He says, if any man will open their heart, I will come into them. He's, he's already made the 10,000 mile journey to get to you. He's standing at the door of your heart today. Will you open your heart? That's the question. Will you open your heart? If you'll open your heart, he says, I'll come into you. I'll sup with you. I'll, I'll, I'll become your savior. I'll become your Lord. And you know, for all of you that came forward here, I was 18 years old when somebody told me what I'm telling you today. 18. I knew I was a sinner. I knew I didn't have God in my life. I was a good boy. I was a good Catholic. I'd gone to church. I served as, as an altar boy. I did all the things you're supposed to do in my religion. But I didn't, know, I didn't know Jesus. And I came to a place, I said, I don't know 100% what I'm doing, but I know I need this. Like you, I raised my hand and I stepped forward. And here's what the Bible says. I'm going to just tell you how simple it is. It's a big decision, but it's going to change your life. He said, if you will believe in your heart, believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died on the cross. And he says, if you'll confess with your mouth that he is your Lord and your Savior, you'll be saved. 
Now, I know you are asking, you, you came here because I asked you. I said, do you believe that Jesus is the Son of God? You said yes. Will you ask him to come into your heart? Will you ask him to become your Lord and your Savior? Will you live for him? Will you die for him? Will you let him change you? I believe you will. I'm so proud of you. Would you pray this prayer with me? Put your hand on your heart. With all your heart, say this. Say, Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God. And I believe that you died on the cross. That you were buried. And that you were raised from the dead. That I might have new life. I'm asking you today to forgive me for my sin my part in sin and to come into my heart to be my Lord and to be my Savior. I receive you today in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. That, that prayer has life-changing power. The Bible says that salvation translates you from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of light. Here's what I'm going to ask you to do. I'm going to ask you to get a Bible. If you don't have a Bible, get a Bible. But in the front of your Bible, write today's date down. Say, on a resurrection Sunday, on the 31st of March, 2024, I made a decision to follow Jesus. Then don't just have a Bible, start reading it. Start reading in the Gospel of of John. Just start reading the Gospel of John. That's the love chapter. It'll start telling you how much Jesus really loves you. And then begin to fellowship with each other. Learn how to fellowship with each other. Right now we have a couple of, of our pastors that will just go with you for a minute. Maybe tell you some first steps. But you're in a beautiful church. You're, in a, you, you're probably here with your parents, some of you. And let's believe that this will be a watershed moment for you as a family to begin to really walk with God much, much more in the days to come. I'm really proud of you guys. Bless you, big man. Bless you. All right, go to my left, your right. Follow that man right there. <laughs> Praise God. I, I can't get away from... The fact that I, I, I think there's people here that are really suffering with family problems, sickness, spiritual problems, financial problems, and you need resurrection power in your life. And I, 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 I just want you to receive the resurrection power in the situations that you're facing right now. What was accomplished at Calvary through the cross, through the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus, I believe it'll work for you today. I believe that it can be powerful in your life today. But like Paul, like the Apostle Paul, we need to forsake everything else. You can't be going to the witch doctor and go to Jesus at the same time. Choose this day whom you'll serve. You're either going to be an ancestralist or you're going to be a Christian. You're either going to go back to tradition or you're going to follow Jesus and the power of the resurrection. But choose this day. But if you choose Jesus today, I'd like you to pray with me right now. And I'd like you to do so by raising your hands and say, I'm surrendering my sickness, my financial problem, my family problem, my agony, my pain. I'm surrendering it to you today. And Father, I bring these lifted hands before you. I bring each and every person that is laying their care on you. You said, cast our cares on you, for you care for us. Cast our burdens on you, for you will be our burden bearer. I declare resurrection power over each of these situations today. I declare a turning of the tide. I declare that there's a repentance taking place and that this congregation from today will see a 180 degree turn as they fully seek your face, as they fully seek the gospel, that the gospel will set them free, that the power of the resurrection 
will work in marriages. The power of the resurrection will work in families. The power of the resurrection will begin to work as we yield ourselves to you. I command healing. I command every sickness broken in Jesus' name. I command, Father, that information will flow for the restoration of marriages. I believe that opportunities will present themselves to heal families, for real conversations to take place. Father, I'm asking, Lord, that you would cause knowledge to increase, that, Father, you would grant revelation, the eyes of our understanding to be opened, the Father, that we would begin to walk in the wisdom necessary, the wisdom needed to walk in resurrection power. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. Would you just give somebody next to you a hug or a handshake and say, man, I'm glad we came to church today. I'm glad that God's helping us. Then go ahead and take your seats. We're going to take a few more minutes here. And uh, this morning it's... It's actually my privilege to be able to graduate some of our women and our men. We combined it with all of our churches so we could be together. And by the way, thank you for celebrating my birthday. I didn't expect that. I don't ever expect that. By the way, I'm not after your money. I'm really not. I'm after your blessing. And yes, you can honor by giving and things like that, and I receive it as an honor. But I don't have a 10,000 rand blessing to give you. Freely I have received, freely, freely I give. Amen? The gospel can't be charged for it. If anybody's charging for it, if they're making you pay something for it, it's a fraud. It's a fraud. I'll call it out just what it is. And you're being duped. And it feeds into the culture. Because you have to pay the witch doctor. But not the servant of God. The servant of God doesn't get paid. Freely, freely I've received. Amen? We have a video that we're going to play now. And then we're going to begin our graduation for our ladies. program. We are excited to have you on board on this amazing journey of discovery of self and of God. So please pay attention to the following safety instructions. Whenever you feel unloved, unimportant or insecure, remember to whom you belong. You're no longer a wandering exile. This kingdom of faith is now your home country. You're no longer a stranger or outsider. You belong here with as much right to the name Christian as anyone. We invite you to come as you are, no matter your background, age, social status, race, or nationality. As we begin this journey, we want to remind you that during this journey, you will discover your true worth and purpose and be reborn and reignited because a life of purpose is a life most fulfilled. To start your journey with us, you need to enroll with Roots and pay your grounding session fees, ensure you are placed in a cell and get your boarding pass. Our destination for this flight is becoming the Proverbs 31 woman. We will explore the war waged by the devil against you as a woman to steal, kill and destroy your true worth, potential, opportunities and your seed. The journey will help you understand God's antidote to this agenda of the devil against you as a woman as well as his desire for you, the woman, to be fruitful in every season and area of your life. We're committed to making this journey safe and enjoyable for you. So please, fasten your seatbelt and keep your boarding pass with you all the time. Mobile phones and other electronic devices should now be turned off. If you experience a loss of cabin pressure at any time during this journey, oxygen masks in the form of pastors and other loving sisters will surround you. If this happens, place the word of God over your heart and mouth and speak it as necessary. Be sure to read your own Bible before helping others. Loud shouts of Amen, ouch, yes, expressing your agreement with the word are most welcome. 
you have seen an empty seat anywhere on this aircraft and whenever the next grounding session advert is sent, please make sure you invite and bring someone next time and be a part of a cell group as we do not leave any system behind. Invite others too. For further assistance, kindly reach out to our respective flight attendants. Thank you for choosing Roots, Ladies Discipleship Program. We hope you have a safe and enjoyable journey. Roots Ladies Discipleship Program. You belong here. Amen. Amen. You belong here. This morning we're celebrating women who have completed the first of four levels of our Roots Discipleship Program. Now we believe that true womanhood and Christ-likeness are synonymous. The essence and true value of a woman is measured not merely in how she looks, but more importantly, in her virtue, the virtue of a woman. So we're passionate about equipping women to exude virtue. This virtue amplifies her inner beauty over her outward appearance. We honor our homemakers who uphold the standard of Christ-likeness for herself and for her family. Roots is Celebration Church's discipleship program for women designed to equip and enable women to be conscious of their true value and their true potential, to be grounded in godly principles and patterns based on the book of Titus. Titus 2 verses 1 through 8 is the foundation scripture for this whole program. And then we also are helping women to be continually in a place of bearing fruit, the fruit of the Holy Spirit in every season of their life. We all go through different seasons of our lives. As indicated, Roots is about discipleship. That's being a disciple and a follower of Jesus Christ. It's one who yields to being held accountable to biblical virtues and equally holds others to account as well. Its aim is to build an army of women that will serve God, serve their family, and serve people. Today, we want to honor and celebrate those who have completed this first level. We call it the planted level. They've gone through one year of discipleship. Would you please welcome our ladies as they come?
celebration members demonstrating the widespread of the impact of the youth program. On behalf of South Africa, taking the South African, thank you Pastor Bonnie for this meeting and for laying the foundation for discipling women. We also thank my Sherini and the team in Arare for their leadership and support. I also want to acknowledge Pastor Tom and Pastor Bonnie, Pastor Audrey, who is not with us today, for her leadership and for getting us where we are here today. So we say Ebenezer. Amen. Pastor Tom, Pastor Bonnie, these ladies have been faithful. I'm honored to commend them to, for you. Amen. 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 Well, each of you has openly declared a desire to become virtuous women. Of ageless inner beauty, adorned with an ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, which is of great value before God. A true daughter of Sarah, a woman who fears the Lord, producing life in all of life's situations. Today, it's my privilege. Pastor Bonnie, come and join me. Today, it's our privilege to release you into kingdom service. We want you to apply what you've learned to proceed to the next levels of discipleship in this program, being fruitful in all seasons of your life, victorious in your journey towards becoming Christ-like. And so it's our privilege to declare over you, planted women, take root downwards and bear fruit upwards in Jesus' name. Now I'm going to ask Bonnie just to lay hands on each of you quickly and bless you and grace you. Thank you. Both. Amen. Hallelujah. I just bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Bless you. Amen. Bless She's praying, by the way, for all the ladies that are here and you've not joined Roots. You're not part of it. There's a sign-up desk at the back. I'm going to encourage you to go back there, become a part of this great discipleship family. I pray that you will always know his love. I pray that you will always know his peace. And as you studied this roots and endured much hardship, I pray eventually you'll get a little bit more sleep. pray you see his sunlight in the rain. I pray you know his comfort in the midst of any pain. And when you face a challenge, you must fight the fight of faith. <coughs> but I know that you've been faithful, because here you stand today. And you stood when others would have turned away. And you stayed when no one else could take the pressure. <coughs> and you kneel when no one saw you cry and pray. <coughs> but God, our Father, he was there. And here you stand today. Come on, you can do better than that. Give him a great hand. Hallelujah. Ladies, we're very proud of you. God bless you. 
And uh, you may take your seats as we move on to the next part of our program. God bless you. Amen. To see your life to him surrendered, to help you find his way in all you do, we pray for you. Amen. Well, now we move on to what we call Be That Man and the Majoring in Men graduation. Be That Man is Celebration Church's foundational program for discipleship of men today. And God only knows that men need to be discipled. Today we are recognizing 16 men who have successfully engaged in the Be That Man program this year. Celebration Ministries International takes very seriously the call to foster an environment where men can learn to take their rightful place in life. As a man learns to take responsibility to lead themselves, they acquire skills to effectively lead their families. Strong men, strong men build strong families, and they form the basis for strong churches. Strong churches become a foundation for strong communities, strong cities that, lead, that eventually lead to godly nations. Each year as our men graduate, they're encouraged to invite one or more of their friends to come and witness this milestone in their life. And by the way, this is a very important milestone. The, these men make that invitation for two reasons. First, because what's been accomplished is something to be proud of because they've worked very, very hard to achieve it. Secondly, the journey to manhood is about aligning ourselves with our faith in Christ. As such, these men are making a public declaration about their life in front of witnesses. Paul said it this way, I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Jesus Christ. This is kind of like drawing a line in the sand and saying, I'm not ashamed to be a follower of Jesus Christ. I'm not ashamed that I'm on a journey to becoming a better man. I'm pleased this morning to present to you 16 men who persevered and are graduating this morning. Those graduates, these graduates come from the whole Southern African region. This morning, men from Celebration Church Cape Town are here. Celebration Church Johannesburg. And of course, our own Celebration Church Pretoria. They're here to receive this honor. Let's just watch a video quickly. In a man's world, there's only one thing that stands between success and failure. Purity and perversion. Honor and disgrace. Faith and doubt. Life and death. It comes down to your choice. It comes down to your decision. Greatness lies in the heart of every man. We are all made to shine, to conquer, to win, to succeed. But only a few hunger for that victory, that medal of honor, that loving family, that conquest to overcome, that mountain to climb, and that mission impossible to complete. Only a few have their names on the timeline of history. Men that chose the road of good character. Those that dared to cross the thin red line. Are you that man? Be that man. Each year, amen. Each year we recognize the men that successfully begin their journey on the Real Man Runway. And being passionate about discipling men and helping them understand the essence of manhood has always been our goal. One of the fathers of the men's ministry, one of my mentors, Dr. Edwin Lewis Cole, he addressed this when he said this. He says, being a male is a matter of birth but being a man is a matter of choice. 
The Real Man Runway has been designed to help men make that choice. Be that man is the first part of, that, of a man's journey in discovering the true essence of manhood. I'd like you to hear a few of the testimonies of some of our men. Physically, uh, and he was turning to beer. It was just like, I'm the one raising the child. Uh, I, I used to be, uh, what you would say, a lost cause, uh, irresponsible, if you would say irresponsible man, who was uh, not a father to his children, who was not a husband to, to the wife. So when I was growing up, I think God was misrepresented in my life because the father figure that I knew was not there. So I didn't know God intimately. Uh, if you looked at me, you would have, uh, from the outside, uh, seen a very successful man. I was very unhappy, unfulfilled. My marriage knew it should be. And my children, who were now at the stage where quite a number of them were going to university, uh, there was no relationship there. And, uh, you know, life was, I, I, was, I was not a good, at a good place. The need was so great in, in some of the issues and the matters we're dealing with. We definitely knew that a message on a Sunday was not enough uh, to, to deal with some of the problems we needed. Um, the men that were in our church needed ministry. They needed discipleship. We needed to get into men's lives and get that aspect right. And it will translate to getting families right. It will translate to getting relationships with children right. It will translate to getting uh, our marketplace right. It will translate to getting our church, communities, cities, and our nations right. So we created this Be That Man community. He has been in, ama in an amazing husband from the time he joined PTM. The change has not only been to myself, but to the children and to my other family members. BTM got me to, to be able to be a person who can, who can communicate with my wife, communicate my fears, open up and not bottle it inside. And then, uh, as well as on fatherhood, uh, fatherhood, I then realized that it, it, it has to be a relationship, you know, you have to have a relationship with your children. I realized that uh, it was a different way of approach. Being a male is a matter of uh, birth, uh, but being a man takes work, it's a matter of choice. Once you go through this program, there is no way, no way that you're going to come out uh, not impacted as a better man. Imagine thousands of men, you know, in churches across the world, 200 cities, um, fellowshipping like that, you know, impacted with our Lord Jesus Christ, and, and making a difference, and not only in churches and families, but in the boardroom, in, on, you know, on the sports field, uh, in whatever arena they are in. And, 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 and it really, this, this to me is, is a revival of men, where as men now we begin to, to stand up uh, to take our place, uh, you know, in the family and, 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 and lead, you know, our families in the right way and, and, and really be, you know, the men and the fathers there and continuously work uh, towards being that man, you know, and uh, that man we know is Christ. When I started seeing these men who were carrying the same Christ-likeness in different aspects of their lives, whether I saw them at church or outside of church, they were exactly the same. Kind of challenged me to be a more authentic. Our next step is we want to roll it out to 20 cities uh, within Africa. We want to uh, impact 200 churches. If we can change the men, we can change families, and we can change Africa.
Thank you for helping disciple men across Southern Africa. My life is changed because of being that man. Thank you. So as we begin, as we celebrate the Be That Man class of 2023, we recognize that each of these men have made a, a, quite a sacrifice to successfully complete a seven month journey. And they've demonstrated a commitment to pursuing Christ likeness. Would you please welcome, at least join me in welcoming our graduates as they come forward to affix their signature to the creed. And they have a witness with them. They're gonna sign their name. And this is a pledge that these men are making. This is a creed. This creed is their commitment and serves as a reminder to every man that's gone through the Be That Man program that we are to be in pursuit of becoming that man, of being that man. So would you please, as they come forward, welcome them, and then I'm going to read the creed during their signing. I wear on my wrist as a symbol of honor and heritage bestowed upon me by my pastor and the men of faith that have gone before me. It embodies the trust of those I have sworn to protect. By wearing the wristband, I accept the responsibility of my choice to follow Christ as my Savior, to do all I can to walk in the path of Christ-like manhood. I understand to be a male is a matter of birth, but to be a man is a matter of choice. As such, I choose the path of Christ. I also understand that this trust, or that all trust, is a privilege that I must earn every day. My loyalty to my country, church, family, and wife is beyond reproach. I humbly serve as a protector of my family, my fellow believers, and will be always ready to defend those who are unable to defend themselves. I do not boast about my service nor seek recognition for my actions. I voluntarily accept the responsibility of manhood, placing the welfare and security of others before my own. I serve with honor, on and off the spiritual and secular battlefields of my life. The ability to control my emotions and my actions regardless of circumstances set me apart from other men. Uncompromising integrity is my standard. My character are steadfast by words of my bond. I expect to lead and be led. In the absence of evident leadership, I will change and I'll take charge. Leading my family, my church, and even my nation, I will accomplish my assignment for the kingdom and for my life. I lead by example in all situations. I will never quit. I persevere and I thrive on adversity. Almighty God expects me to be physically harder and mentally stronger than my enemy. If knocked down, I will get back up every time. I will draw on everything remaining, on every remaining ounce of strength to protect my wife, my family, my church, and my nation in order to establish God's kingdom rule on earth. I'm never out of the fight. In the worst of conditions, the legacy of my life, and family, and involvement in God's kingdom steadies my resolve silently guides my every deed. I will not fail. As men, we demand discipline. We expect innovation. I understand that the lives of the men around me and the success of our vision depend on me. My skills, my talents, my financial participation, my time and my attention to detail. My training is never complete. We train for battle, we fight for me. I stand ready to bring myself under the authority of God's word and I'm willing to do whatever it takes to achieve my mission and the goals established by my family, church, and country. The execution of my duties will be swift and self-sacrificing when required. 
yet guided by the very principles that I embrace and have embraced to be that man. I recognize that a cloud of witnesses, that is, men of God, who have gone before me, my faith is around me. I join with them as I step over the thin red line, thus committing myself to the service of the Lord Jesus Christ and the honor of being that man. And I bind myself to uphold all of the values that I've set forth in this pledge and sign my name to on this 31st day of March, 2024, before my family, my pastor, my fellow men, members of Celebration Church. Men, you have successfully completed the first part of the real man journey. Now charge you to continue the journey of discovering the true essence of manhood. Be an example to men in the way that you speak, in the way that you live, in your love, in your faith, and in your purity. Now throw yourselves into the task of being Christ-like so that everyone will see your progress. Keep a close watch on your life and stay true to what is right. Next step is majoring in manhood. This morning, I want to welcome you to the Real Man Family. Amen. Give them a welcome. I'm really proud of these men. Amen. Now, each year, we take time to certify and commission a certain group. These are men who successfully completed the majoring in men course, MIM. And those who have served faithfully as majored men. Today we have a group of men who have exerted themselves. They really have. They have taken responsibility for their lives. They've worked very, very hard for this day. Some of them over a period of two or three years to get them. also to faithful men who will be able to teach others also. Three remain faithful to disciple and to raise leaders to carry out this man. We are celebrating three men this morning who will be certified as having fully completed the major manhood. This year we expanded the format to include an online format. So majoring in manhood is a year-long program designed to equip men maximize their manhood. We teach being male is a matter of birth, but being a man is a matter of choice. These men have made that choice. And we believe that manhood and Christ-likeness in their lives is synonymous. The choice to be Christ-like requires courage, discipline, and determination to develop them. These men have learned that winners are not those who don't fail, all fail those who don't quit. We have by no means arrived, like all of us, none of us have arrived, but we've committed ourselves to the process of work. We have been on a journey, a journey to release their God-given potential and apply the principles and the patterns that they've learned in order to serve their families, their communities, the Church of God. This morning, we are a 
awarding certificates of completion and majoring in math and curriculum. We want to release them to their kingdom and service to apply what they have learned to teach others. May they prosper in their endeavors. Accountability is the core of the disciples and the disciplines of the commissioned lives. Commissioned men hold themselves and others to a high moral standard. Based on the word of God, they no longer live for themselves, they live for God and for other people mind. Today they become part of the fellowship of the other sheep. God of honor, take your position. Draw your sword. the fellowship of the unashamed, and I have been cast. The decision is for me. I've stepped over the line. I won't look back, let up, slow down, back away. My past is redeemed. My present makes, my present makes sense, and my future is secure. I'm finished and done with no living, sight walking, small planning, smooth knees, colorless dreams, tame mundane talk, cheap giving, and dwarf gold. I no longer need preeminence, prosperity, position, promotions, plaudits, or popularity. I don't have to be right, first, top, recognized, praised, regarded, or rewarded. I now live by faith. Lean on his presence, walk with patience, live by prayer, labor, My face is set, my gate is fast, my goal is heaven, my road is narrow, my way is rough, my 
companions are few, my guide is reliable, and my mission is clear. I cannot be bought, compromised, detoured, lured away, turned back, deluded, or delayed. I will not flinch in the face of sacrifice, hesitate in the presence of the adversary, adversary. negotiate at the table of the enemy, ponder at the popular. Ponder at the pool of popularity or meander in the maze of mediocrity. I won't give up, shut up, let up, or slow up until I've stayed up, stored up, prayed up, paid up, and spoken up for the cause of Christ. I am a disciple of Jesus. I must go till he comes, give till I drop, preach all I know, and work in the next time. When he comes for his own, Commissioned men, draw your sword. <laughs> Mighty men, we Mighty men, we serve. Mighty men, we serve. We stand. Mighty to serve. We stand. Mighty to serve. We stand. Mighty to serve. Amen. <laughs> Commission men, shield your sword. Now, as our real man movement grows, there's also a demand to grow our leaders. Leadership is in short supply in the world today, real leaders. Moses chose capable men from among the Israelites and set them apart as leaders over thousands hundreds, fifties, and tens, so that he could govern and care for the people adequately. Today, I want to appoint leaders that will help us do the same over our major and commissioned men. From the Pretoria Church, the major class of 2023, I want to recognize Munamato Chiovu. From the Johannesburg Church, Moses Ngurume. Over the Commission Men of Pretoria, I want to recognize Adolf Nyamugama. Please come forward. And Panashi Nika. And over our Cape Town Church, Richard Desha. A senior amongst the commissioned men of his class, I'd like to, from Johannesburg, recognize Wellington Chigovanika and, and Brian Shamu. Now I'd like you all to extend your hands towards these men. This is an incredible moment for them as they make a decision, not only to be part of this movement, but to be leaders, leaders in the church, leaders in the community, and leaders amongst men. So Father, we pray for these men. We acknowledge that Father, you are the one who calls, you're the one who gives giftings, but we're also acknowledging the fact that these men have worked hard. They've shown their desire to be godly men, men that would serve you, that would love you, Father, may they be examples in the body of Christ. May they take up this position, this place. Father, may you help them. May your grace be mighty over them. May your Holy Spirit now fill them with the ability to not only lead, but be examples to those that they do lead. 
Father, grace them. Grace them in their families. Grace them in their marriages. And grace them in their homes. Grace them in their workplace. And Father, grace them in the church, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. You know, when we started to formulate the concept of be that man, you know, we, we borrowed an idea from the first responders. These are men and women that are known in many parts of the world as the men and women dressed in blue. Police officers, firefighters, rescuers, paramedics, and other trained persons for such type work. These, are, these, these people are specialized. They're specialized, they're trained, and they're among the first to arrive whenever there's a problem, to provide assistance at a scene of an emergency or an accident or a natural disaster or a terrorist attack or even just a, a common theft. They are responsible for the protection and the preservation of life. And they have a code. They have a code that knits them together and they have each other's back. They call themselves the thin blue line. They usually have uniforms and they're dressed in blue. And in many cases, they are the difference between order and chaos, between peace and anarchy. Today, we identify ourselves as the thin red line, the thin red line. Of course, the red line for us represents the blood of Jesus. And we believe that once a man has crossed the line, the die has been cast, a decision is made, that he'll no longer live his life as a mediocre man. A lifestyle that is second, but first for God. He'll never look back. He's made a choice to live by the standard that manhood and Christ-likeness are synonymous. And it's a choice that brings us to a place of accountability in our lives. Accountability to God, accountability to our families, our wives, our fellow men. And as brothers, it's our desire to watch and have each other's six each other's back. In the front of this auditorium this morning, we have placed on the ground and on the floor a red line, a thin red line. You've watched 16 men make a decision to begin a journey to become real men. My challenge this morning is if you're a man here today and you've not begun the journey of wanting to be that man, by the way, None of us are that man. We want to be that man. That's why the, we named it Be That Man. We are all on a journey to be that man. But this morning, I'm going to ask, if you're a man here today, and you say, I would like to be that man. I would like to go on a journey to becoming a better man, to becoming God's man. I'm going to ask all of us to stand in the auditorium. And if you're here and say, that's me, I want you to get out of your seat, and I want you to come across the thin red line today and say, I want to be a part of Be That Man. Just come quickly, wherever you're at. I challenge you to come to the front, cross the red line. Come on. Now, I want to make it clear. It's good. Here they come. Come on, man. Come on. Great. Great. Just come right on up. There you go. Come and step over the line. Amen. Is there anybody else? All right. I want to make this very, very clear this morning, okay? This is about making a decision to live right. It's about a desire to be that man. It's not about joining a church. You're not joining a denomination. You see, when you cross the thin red line, we're going to give you a wristband. You're going to receive a wristband. For each of us, this wristband is a symbol of honor. We wear it proudly. But it's also a reminder. It's a reminder of the decision and the commitment that we made. Each of us have made that commitment that you're making today. We stepped across the line and said, Eesh. I want to be that man.
No, none of us are that man yet. We want to be that man, but we're not there yet. But we're striving to be that man. We're all on a journey, and we've decided to do so not alone, but with other men. We're not going to leave anybody behind. We're going to do this together. If one of us falls, we're here to help pick each other up. We do it intentionally. We do it purposefully. And I want to say and reiterate again that none of us have arrived, lest you be fooled. Because some of us are not perfect yet. We're wanting to be like Christ. We're not yet Christ. But all we want to be is the man that Jesus wants us to be. I'm advising those of you that have stepped forward to join with some of these men and step outside for just a minute so that they can tell you how to get involved and how to make the next step and be that man. I want all of us in the congregation not only to applaud, applaud these seven men that have come forward, but every man that stands on this stage. These are men that have made a choice and a decision. Would you give them a good round of applause? God bless you. Men, congratulations. God bless you. You're on the journey of a lifetime, and it's going to bless you. Amen? Let's give them one more round of applause. God bless you. If you'll join these men right here. Amen. We'll get a picture just now with everybody. Amen. Dr. Jabu, would you come and would you give us the benediction tonight, today, and release us? 